You must always pack your proverbial lunch whenever you take on Kansas State because they don't have very many exploitable areas. So the areas you can't exploit, don't just prepare to bring a lunch. Prepare to have a feast. You are Locked On Oklahoma State, your daily podcast on the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Howdy, y'all, and hello, all. Welcome back to the Locked On Oklahoma State, your daily stop for all things cowboy and cowgirl related. My name is Cody Stovall. I want to thank you kindly for stopping by to make this your first listen here on Locked On Oklahoma State. You know we're available on every single podcasting platform, visually as well on YouTube. You can find me personally on Twitter at all day of state. Today, partially brought to you by Game Time. There's no need to worry any longer about stressing months in advance. You can get tickets through game time to any sports, comedy, movie, theater, last minute, no need for the stress. It is going to be a stressful week for us simply because Kansas State is always good, or at least always good uh, when it comes to us. Regardless of how many times we've been able to overmatch them from a talent perspective, They always find a way to make it interesting, even if you go back to like the days of 2011, the years that we thought we were clearly better, Kansas State always makes life interesting. And then you have a year like last year where we're both kind of riding, at least publicly to some degree, you know, certain highs being Oklahoma State being undefeated and Kansas State always being dangerous, especially in Manhattan. Well, we get them in Stillwater, thankfully, this Friday, but it's not much different. This is still the same Kansas State that bring your lunch pail mentality is still how they operate through life. And you, you don't typically see a lot of mistakes out of Kansas State squads, and this is going to be somewhat no different. But the areas that are exploitable thus far seems to be in the back end of the defense. Whenever you look at the game against UCF, even if you go back and look at the only loss on the year, which was to Mizzou, you know, at the time it was a, a frustration style of loss. But now you've seen Missouri kind of crank out this undefeated season thus far. So obviously it's not that big of a loss. They, they're floating right outside the top 25. I think you should argue, you could argue, they should be in the daggone thing. But nonetheless, the back end is a little bit of an issue, right? We, we know offensively Oklahoma State doesn't exactly, you know, rank up at the top in, in a decent amount of categories. Well, this is going to be likewise for Kansas State on the defensive side of the ball. They do have a really, really good corner in Parrish, but opposite opposite of, of Jacob Parrish, I don't I don't know that they have a lot of faith in, in Willie. And then even behind him, Justice James, if, if you wanted to go to the other side and you wanted to grab a Keenan Garber and let him play both sides of the, the cornerback position, other than Jacob Parrish, there's not a big threat here. Uh, Kobe Savage is a pretty good strong safety, especially whenever it, it's coming up to stop the run which is why running on them is not exactly simplistic to do. But throwing the ball, they've got some holes. I think you could definitely include uh, Marquez, Marquise Nigel in there as well. He he gets uh, caught out of position. UCF did a really good job on finding some of those areas. They took some deep shots. And when they had opportunities with 50-50 balls, other than you know Parrish, they were pretty good about uh, coming up with those. And then if you notice, we threw in running backs here as guys that could potentially feast. Kansas State doesn't doesn't hemorrhage anything from the run game. But when you look at what they give up through the air in the running back room, that's where there's an exploitable hole here. Kansas State definitely has a deficiency when it comes to defending the running backs out of the backfield in the passing game. And guys, we've seen Ollie Gordon be able to do some stuff whenever he gets the ball in his hands out in space. We all know that that is Jaden Nixon's bread and butter. So this could be a game where Jaden Nixon goes absolutely crazy. But even if it's Ollie Gordon, guys, when you get Ollie Gordon out there in space, what he lacks in maybe straight line speed, he makes up for in physicality. So there's nobody on the defensive side of the ball for Kansas State that's going to be super ecstatic about getting Ollie Gordon one-on-one out in the flat. 
the 50-50 capabilities of Dijon Stribling and Jaden Bray should show out here. And Brennan Presley does a very good job of finding himself in some open seams. And then again, if you go look at the statistical side of things, kind of like Cincinnati yesterday or, or over the weekend, yeah, the scoreboard didn't indicate what they were able to do offensively, but there's a decent amount of production. And we're not even talking about their running back. We're going to focus on some of their their skill guys uh, a little bit more tomorrow as far as weapons are concerned. But our guys on the back end should have a decent day. You're not gonna you're not gonna run for five point five six yards of carry on Kansas State more often than not. Now they also were pretty susceptible. It seemed to delay draws on like third and 16, third and 18. Now that that's something they're gonna be watching out for. Don't know that it's super exploitable, but once again, some of the things that we get irritated about that our offense has a lot of bubble screens, a lot of tunnel screens, a lot of delayed handoffs on third and 15, third and 16. These are things that actually worked against Kansas State. When you go back and look at some of their other games. Now, whether it's some of it be desperation on the offensive side of the ball or the fact that they were doing some three down, um, you know, prevent style of defenses as well, maybe. But again, we're looking for exploitation. And some of the things that we beat our head against the wall, wondering why we do all the time, happen to be things that Kansas State seems to struggle on, struggle at defensively. And the screens are an, another form of that. Whether it be the slip, the tunnel screen, slip screen, you know, bubble screen, or you know, just the the underneath slip stuff to the running backs. The screen game is something that Kansas State doesn't typically have issues with, right? The, the eye candy, the sexy stuff moving here and there. But against UCF, they had those problems. Against Mizzou, they had those problems, and even to some degree against Troy, you could say they dealt with some of that. So they're still very fundamentally sound. They're still a very disciplined Kansas. The state squad, but the back candy style of stuff does seem to get them a little bit more than usual. And those screens that we hate oh so much that we do probably far too often, they seem to be the ticket for most of these other games. So the things that we struggle to get over doing might actually be beneficial here, right? I'm, don't get in third, 16, third, and 18. I'm not saying that, but when you do have those situations, Kansas State does have some difficulties preventing some of these screens from you know, maturing into major chunks of, of yardage. So this is an opportunity that our wide receivers can win the 50-50 balls because they do give them up. And then in space, right, whenever we can take advantage of having a linebacker or a running back in space and or just getting the ball out of our hands quickly to these wide receivers, these are the areas outside of the front seven that Kansas State has some deficiencies in. The front seven is going to be pretty stout, right? That's pretty standard, pretty typical, pretty normal. And then the back end of it, they've got some athleticism. They've got some speed, but they've got some youth. They've got some guys that do get tricked by the eye candy. Flea flicker stuff works on them quite often as well. So the old school, never getting fooled by stuff, K-State, that isn't exactly this K-State. They seem to get fooled a decent amount. It's the normal stuff that they excel at. It's the kind of extra fancy eccentric stuff that they seem to have some difficulties with. So this could be a game where some of our cutesy tootsy stuff that we do on the outside screen game wise is slightly beneficial. And if you can do that, if you can spread the defense out east to west, that's going to open up some of the running lanes in the middle, whether that be uh, Ollie Gordon or Elijah Collins. I do expect some of these guys to have big games on the outside. Another big thing that you can expect on the outside before we get to the defensive lineman's test is, again, the game time tickets, ladies and gentlemen. You don't have to stress. You don't have to worry. You don't have to plan for months in advance and wonder what family's going to be able to get there and can I beat this person at this airport and get this taxi or this Uber or this whatever. This is the answer. That's game time. Game time, it's super simple, guys. You're going to be able to get them fast, the tickets, easy, and for sports, music, comedy, theater, whatever you need near you with killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, and you get to view the seats with the best price guarantee, kind of a big deal. They take all the guesswork out of it. Easy to find, easy to buy, easy seats to view beforehand with the lowest price guaranteed, event cancellation protection, and job loss protection. They've got deals on tickets right up to the start of the event, even an hour afterwards. 
It's the perfect place to find the last minute seats that you need, guys. They have exclusive fast flash deals and sponsor deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. With the zone deals, you get to pick a section and game time will pick the exact seats for an average of 18% off savings. And the game time guarantee means you will always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section in the same room for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. So again, take all the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app create an account, and use the code Locked On College for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. But again, go create that account. Redeem that code Locked On College, L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-C-O-L-L-E-G-E for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. What is not guaranteed is beating up and or eating up the offensive line for Kansas State. Go figure. Big surprise. They're still good at it. It's the corn-fed, simplistic, tenacity approach, I guess, when it comes to recruiting offensive linemen to Manhattan, Kansas, because Charlie Dickey was able to do it very, very well in Manhattan, not so well in Stillwater, Oklahoma. But again, the, the things that the offensive linemen are asked to do in Manhattan are pretty, pretty simple. And as we'll talk about more in the third segment, like Will Howard has some built-in protections that doesn't have anything to do with the offensive line. So the offensive line's job is what? It is simple. It is simple. When they run the ball, it's effective. It means something. It's not just because Giddens is a bad man with Jamma, which again we'll talk more about tomorrow. But yeah, they find different ways for Will Howard to be more comfortable. And then when you always have a good running back, which we talked about before the year, you know, a lot of people made a big to do about missing Deuce Vaughn and don't get it twisted. Deuce Vaughn is a bad man with Jamma. I know that. But Kansas State always is able to find running back somehow, some way. They just do. And this is no different. So, of course, Will Howard's going to have some options. He's going to have some weapons. But the offensive line is a test. We we talked about South Alabama, Central Arkansas having big dudes, but not necessarily the talent and the depth that still gave us, you know, a little bit of a, of a hard time. Now we're talking about somebody who's got the size and the physicality and the Big 12 depth all put together. That is Kansas State. And, again, their offensive line has always been good. You can go back 20 years, and it's something that it's a staple, right? The old Bill Snyder, Purple Power Cats, they were going to be very, very physical, very, very disciplined, not necessarily wow you with, with an overabundance of speed, size, skill, whatever. Just do everything right. Well, Chris Kleiman has the same idea. Right, He has the same principles, which is, I think, what's allowed Kansas State to make this transition super smooth, right? They're very like-minded. They recruit the same type of guy, and they expect the same type of things. So our defensive line coming into the season wasn't exactly, you know, insanely harrowing. And realistically, guys, you're not hearing Colin Clay and Justin Kirkland's name necessarily pop out all over the place. But – from a production standpoint, they're doing very well. Their job is to eat things up and make things difficult and kick the game to a little bit more of the outside. We know how talented Deshaun Brown is. We know how realistically good Nathan Olatu is, is come on, but we're not getting enough out of the D-line. We're not getting enough out of this D-line. And for this offensive line of Kansas State, for the, them to be able to operate that they, the way that they want to, it's like they have two completely different mindsets when it comes to passing. Part of that's going to be Will Howard. Part of that's going to be the, the comfort that they have in the running back. But these tight ends and these running backs are going to make life very difficult on the secondary. So this is the time where the defensive line absolutely needs to step up. They need to do something a little bit different, a little bit out of the ordinator to help the guys in the back end because – if Will Howard can sit back all day, which, you know, he has two different ways of doing that. But if he can, it's going to be not only a difficult proposition to get to dub, but it's almost going to be an impossible task to stop. 
So this is the game where the guys down low have got to do just a little bit more. And again, we're not talking about Colin Clay and Justin Kirkland per se, because they have been they've done a good job of of doing the simple things that we need done. It's, in my opinion, the guys on the outside that haven't given us enough. It's the blitzing linebackers that haven't got home fast enough. So if if there's a day that the defensive line takes a stand and says, you know what, Dagnabbit, we're tired of X, Y, or Z, this is the time. Because if you can stand up against Kansas State's offensive line, everybody will, will look at you in a different light, right? from a preparation standpoint for the rest of the season. Right now, it looks like our defensive line is going to give up four or five yards to carry. Now, we're not necessarily getting to the quarterback a crap ton. But this is the game where this area needs to, to stand out. Because the secondary, again, they're, they've got a task at hand. Not just because of Will Howard, not just because of, you know, DJ Giddens. But what they do creativity-wise on offense isn't crazy by any stretch of the imagination. If you can speed things up for Will Howard, he doesn't mind taking one on the chin and still delivering the football. But he was a little banged up going into the UCF game. I know they've had a week off. How how banged up is that ankle going to be once the game gets rocking and rolling and gets started? They will they will run, Will Howard. So it's something you have to watch out for. They've got another quarterback that they bring in that loves to run, and he's really daggone fast. We'll talk a little bit more about him uh, tomorrow. Jake Rubley's still the backup. But what they're able to do offensively, it's predicated upon what happens up front. So if you can be insanely disruptive and you can throw them off of what makes them comfortable, that's that's where you're going to have an opportunity to see the, the defensive secondary have some time. It's all about time, right? Nobody, no defense anywhere can keep every wide receiver tied in, running back, covered up for six, seven seconds. You just can't do it. So if you can force that to change a little bit on the downs that they don't want it to, that's where we can excel. And it's not going to have to be every single down because every single down, it's like they have two different wavelengths in which they process things or, or in which they allow Will Howard to call things with. So this is the day that Justin Kirkland, Colin Clay, you got to keep doing your thing, clogging up the middle, make it ugly, muddy, and nasty. But we got to see more of Nathan Law too. we got to see more of Deshaun Brown. we got to see Colter Walter. She to get back there. Is this a day where Xavier Ross gets to spread his wings and show a little bit more versatility? Is this the game that Deshaun Brown finally gets to the quarterback over and over again, like I've been you know, hoping and waiting on, on a sing throughout the entirety of this season? If so, it's going to give us a good opportunity because the back end, the test that they have is so difficult. You don't wish it upon them or anybody. So. What are we going to see out of the D-line? That's the question. Against the best offensive line we've gone up against thus far. We've been hoping, begging, almost, dare I say, demanding more physicality. If you're not physical against Kansas State, none of this even matters. So I, I think that's something that we know that we got to bring to the table today or this, this, this Friday. So physicality shouldn't be a big issue, shouldn't be a big question. Is the technique and the fundamentals of what we're doing defensively, whether it be stunt, twist, four down, three down, is that going to be enough to offset their, their talent that they have at the offensive line and the useful ways that they uh, utilize the running backs and the tight ends creativity-wise within this offense? It's going to be a question of who's the bee's knees for that day, because we all know the bee's knees of all time for all clothing brands, 24-7 is bird dogs. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are wearing bird dogs, you kind of forget. That's why you've got to continue to up 
upgrade your stash that you do have because they've got the boxers that are built in. So you never uh, you never feel any any of the um, the downside to being uncomfortable. They're functional for every single occasion. I've said it before. I'll say it again. You can walk in them, work in them, fight in them, go to sleep in them, swim in them. Anything you look, want to do, you can do it. It doesn't matter if you're going golfing, you're going out to dinner, going to the movies. You get to look good, feel good, which should help you play good. I'm rocking the, uh, the Bird Dogs hat right now. You're going to have the water bottle gear accessible to you. So go to birddogs.com slash locked on XXX or and enter the promo code locked on XXX at checkout for free Bird Dogs water bottle. Get the gift for the best clothing brand in the game. You know they're the bee's knees. They're the absolute best. You got to try them because they work for everything. Again, Go to birddogs.com slash locked on XXX. Again, locked on triple X to get yourself hooked up with bird dogs, the bees knees of all clothing brands and the free water bottle that we are giving with it right now. So we'll have nothing, uh, nothing overly sexy, nothing overly pretty. I mean, yeah, I guess he can squat 650, 700 pounds, which is why he can run that call and climb, let attack. But from an offensive standpoint, and again, this is why this is going to be a big day for the defensive line. It seems as though when you go back and look at the games throughout the year, it's like they have two different play calling sheets when passing the ball. Because most most of the time, Will Howard gets the ball out of his hands within a couple seconds, right? Reminiscent of the old Brandon Whedon style Oklahoma State attack, right? It was very decisive, very, very direct, and very quick, very deliberately out of the hand within three seconds. Most of the time, when he holds the ball for longer than three seconds, it's almost always going to the tight end or the running back out of the backfield, like almost always. And so it's like he has a completely different play calling set. It's like, okay, he's got an internal clock. One, two, three. These are my wide receivers. After three, it's like he completely goes away from the wide receivers and now goes to the next set, which is going to be my, my fullback, tight end, and, and running back. And the way that they do it, I mean, it's it's pretty direct. It's either one, two, out, one, two, three, out, or one, two, get out to the edge, get it out to the fullback, hit the running back, coming back underneath on a crossing route. It's not overly crazy, but he doesn't sit in the pocket with his eyes downfield staring, looking for receiver after receiver. He goes to the receivers. If he can't get a receiver, it's easy. Check down, tight end, fullback, running back, but it's not just your traditional, oh, crap, I'm going to check it down. It almost legitimately seems like he's got two different play clocks in his head. One play clock is for the wide receivers. One play clock is for what you technically call checkdowns. But their checkdowns aren't running your traditional just, you know, leak out routes. They're running intentional delayed routes across the field, backside drags. So it's not crazy, but you can tell Colin Klein has put some work into what their route concepts are going to be and how there's two different ways to go about the same, the same concept, basically. So it'll be very interesting to see what our secondary is able to do. But if you hold for longer than three, four seconds, Will Howard is going to pick you apart if you cannot get to him. Because whether it be the wide receivers, which he does have some, some skill position talent that we'll talk about tomorrow, including some veteran guys. But other than that, it's just super, super simple. And it's like designed to go two different areas, two different ways at two different times based off of the clock. So the defensive line is going to have a big moment here. It's going to have a big opportunity to try to screw that clock up for Will Howard because whether it be the quick clock or a little bit of the longer clock, the more that you can mess that up, the better it is because he'll still sail balls, right? He'll still sell some balls to some open wide receivers every now and again. It's not like he's dropping dimes 24-7. That's not Will Howard. He doesn't miss terribly a lot, but if you make him 
if you make him speed up the process and you make things difficult for him, that's when that's when you, you typically see him sail, sail the ball a little bit. So that's why I say, well, Howard almost has like two different sets when it comes to the passing game. And it makes it super easy for the offensive linemen because they know that Will Howard's not going to hold the ball, run around for 10, 12, 9, 8, 7 seconds. Like, I love watching Timmy McClain, UCF, but that's what he does. That's what Spencer Sanders did at Oklahoma State. And that's a disservice to the offensive line simply because you can potentially get you know too many linemen downfield or you can get them in a situation where they have to hold on to a guy longer than they need to. So the running around all day, every day scrambling dude, it's not Will Howard. He can run if he needs to. They have some design runs for him as well. And he should be a little bit healthier than he was against UCF. But there are explodable areas that our wide receivers and running backs should be able to get to. The defensive line, if they can show up this game, this day, and make make life extremely difficult on Will Howard and the offensive line, then we're going to have an opportunity because that screws up Will Howard's timing. So whether he's got multiple play calls for the same set or not, it's not going to matter if the defensive line can get home. Because I think this is one of the things that makes Will Howard difficult to defend is they've got some built-in protections just from a game-planning standpoint. And he knows how to use them, and he knows where to get to them at and how to flip his hips pretty seamlessly without looking to that side of the field. They've been working on it. It's clear. So we need to make sure that our defensive line gives our linebackers and safeties enough time to help with this type of stuff. Or else it could be a long day because Will Howard is that good. All right, y'all. Tomorrow we'll talk about some more of the offensive stuff uh, for them and some of their main guys that we need to watch out for and why. So until then, that's all we're going to have for this one right here. As always, you know I love you. God bless. Go folks. And thank you for tuning in to make this your first listen here in Locked On Oklahoma State. All right, y'all. Later, taters. Yeah. <laughs>